The Building Blocks of Life, Biomacromolecules Explained Hey everyone, and welcome back to the channel. Today, we are diving deep into the fascinating world inside every living thing, the incredible molecules that make up you, me, and every organism on Earth. We are talking about biomacromolecules. You might have heard terms like proteins, DNA, carbohydrates, or fats. These aren't just random chemicals, they're the sophisticated machinery that allows life to function. But what exactly defines a macromolecule, and why are they so crucial? Let's break it down. Imagine taking a living tissue, like a piece of liver, and grinding it up. Then, we add some acid, don't worry, this is standard lab procedure. What we end up with are two main fractions, an acid-soluble pool and an acid-insoluble pool. The acid-soluble pool is like the small stuff club. It contains thousands of different organic compounds, but they all share a common feature, their molecular weights are pretty low typically ranging from about 18 to 800 Daltons. We call these micromolecules or simply biomolecules. Think of simple sugars, amino acids, or nucleotides. They're the individual Lego bricks. Now, for the star of our show, the acid-insoluble fraction. This is where the heavy hitters reside. We find four main types of organic compounds here, proteins, nucleic acids, polysaccharides, and lipids. Except for lipids, these compounds are true giants. Their molecular weights can be tens of thousands of Daltons and even much, much higher. For this reason, we call them macromolecules or biomacromolecules. They're like the fully built Lego castles, spaceships, and cars. Macromolecules, 10 0, 0, 0, da. So, we have micromolecules, the small ones, and macromolecules, the large ones. Easy, right? Well, there's always one exception that keeps things interesting, and in biology, that exception is lipids. Lipids, like fats and oils, actually have small molecular weights, often less than 800 Daltons, putting them squarely in the micromolecule range. So why do they end up in the acid-insoluble, macromolecular fraction? It's a great question, and it reveals something important about how cells are structured. Think about cell membranes. They're primarily made of lipids, arranged into complex, insoluble structures. When we grind up a tissue, we are essentially smashing the cell's architecture. The cell membrane and other internal membranes break into tiny pieces, forming little sacs called vesicles. These vesicles are not water-soluble. Because they don't dissolve, they get separated along with the true macromolecules in the acid-insoluble pool. Lipids, small molecules, but form insoluble structures. So, while lipids aren't strictly macromolecules by their individual weight, their tendency to form insoluble structures means they behave like macromolecules in this experimental separation. It's a key insight into how form and function are intertwined in biology. In essence, the acid-soluble pool gives us a glimpse into the general composition of the cell's cytoplasm, all those busy micromolecules. The acid-insoluble pool gives us the larger, structural components from the cytoplasm and organelles, including those crucial membrane fragments. Together, these two fractions represent the entire chemical blueprint of a living organism. And finally, 
A fun fact to put it all into perspective. If we look at the chemical composition of living tissue from an abundance point of view, arranged class-wise, guess what the most abundant chemical in living organisms is? It's not protein, it's not DNA. It's water. That's right, H2O is king. So, the next time you hear about proteins, carbohydrates, or DNA, Remember the incredible complexity and elegance of these biomacromolecules, the fundamental building blocks that make life, as we know it, possible. If you found this explanation helpful, smash that like button, subscribe for more science insights, and let me know in the comments what other biological topics you'd like us to explore. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.